Hello, Full Sail Nation. I hope you guys are enjoying your Hall of Fame so far. We have a really exciting panel today on mentorship, how to find one and how to be one. I'm gonna start with introducing our panelists. Here is Nari Kay. Nari is a graduate of the Game Design Masters from Full Sail and currently a senior producer, uh, producer at Zynga. Nari's career includes roles at ZG Games, BioWare, Edge of Reality, and Wicked Games. Her credits span across social, mobile, and simulation games and includes titles such as Loadout, Star Wars Hunters, Star Wars The Old Republic, Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark, abcmouse.com, and the Game of Thrones slot casino. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Super impressive, right? <laughs> Next, we have Jeremy, Jeremy Vickery. Jeremy is a graduate of the Digital Arts and Design degree. He is the founder and CEO of Lighting Mentor Inc., a business that helps people with their light and coloring for cinematography, illustration, and game projects. His career blends film and game production, working on projects with Pixar, Ubisoft, Naughty Dog, and Sony Ben Studio. Jeremy has contributed to titles, including The Incredibles, Brave, Inside Out, and as well as Assassin's Creed, Odyssey, and Uncharted Lost Legacy. <laughs> yes. Last but certainly not least, we have Jameson Dural. Jameson is a graduate of the Game Design and Game Development degree programs here at Full Sail. Uh, Jameson is at, let me see, oh, the Advanced Senior Game Designer at Insomniac Games. Jameson's career includes positions at Odd Oddworld Inhabitants, EA, Volition, and Doghead Simulations, contributing to titles such as Oddworld Stranger's Wrath, The Simpsons The Game, Red Faction, Armageddon, and Saints Row 4. So we're going to talk about mentorship today, right? Because mentorship can have such a profound impact on your personal and professional development. Through your mentor's lived experience, they can give you feedback, guide you through challenges, uh, help you build your networking circle, and even help you celebrate your successes, right? So we're going to start and turn the first question over to the panelists. How would you define mentorship? How does mentorship, what does mentorship mean to you? And open to all of you. Yeah, I'll start. Um, I think... I think it's really important to kind of frame the discussion around mentorship in, in the right way because I think traditionally we think of like, oh, it's me and one other person, I'm guiding them or they're guiding me, and it's kind of, and, and that is a, a very strong type of mentorship and something that is valuable, but it, it's much broader than that, and there's, there's times where I've accidentally mentored people, right, where I didn't realize that they considered me a mentor and that the advice that I would give them is something that, you know, they, they saw as valuable and vice versa. And I think that that relationship can be something that's very casual. It can be something that's, you know, over the course of time in, in small increments. It doesn't have to be something where you're getting like a very specific commitment from someone to, to do that with you. There's, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of approach it. I would add, too, that I think there's a difference between a teacher and, and a mentor. Uh, a, a teacher is somebody who is like, do this, you know, and here's instruction. Where a mentor is somebody who's kind of coming alongside with you, and um, I think of it like playing ping pong, you know, like I'm going to hit the ball back your way, and if you don't return it, then I'm not, I'm going to stop, you know. But if you return it, then I'm going to give you back something. That there's this two-way street. It's a longer-term thing. It's a relationship. So I've seen so many different types of mentorships. You know, some of them have been in a professional environment. We just have a buddy. You know, so like somebody new comes on the team and like, would you be there for them? So they can ask the stupid questions and they can just come to you anytime they have anything at all. And that's like a minor form of mentorship that works really well. But again, it's, it's a partnership, you know, between two people or, I mean, it could be more. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of variety. The term, you know, I, I've just started my own company just doing mentoring. And I had to look up like, how do other people do it? And there's just huge variety there. So it's a very interesting thing. So actually, the only thing that I would add to that is like the silent partner of mentorship is sponsorship, right? Because the whole reason why we want to get those mentors is to hopefully have them sponsor us into the next phase of our career or the next step in our in our life journey or whatever it may be. So um, I really like to kind of couple it together with mentorship and sponsorship. Not everyone who is a mentor will be a sponsor as well. So like, you know, that's also the other side of the coin, right? And then also not every mentor will fit everyone. So you also need to make sure you understand like what you're seeking and um, uh, 
what you want to get out of the relationship. So, yeah. yeah I think what you're seeking actually changes yep. drastically throughout your career and yeah. like at different stages. And, and, and you also see that I need, I need, I need. And then at some point you're like, I can provide, I can provide. And you start to see that switch. And sometimes in the middle, you're doing a little bit of both and, you know, through the rest of your career. Yeah. And also you can also have more than one mentor at a time because sometimes one mentor is really great at one thing and then a different mentor will be able to, to provide that advice or uh, whatever you need in, in that different area. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually I want to just briefly talk about kind of my personal mentorship philosophy. This is something I, I learned about 10 years ago and it's, it's, this is for my personal development which is something you're always going to, to do and that's what I always have what I consider my five. And, and what that means for me is five different people that are in my life in some form because they have a specific skill or something about them that I, I want to make better and I think they can help me do that. Those people usually don't know that, that they're providing that for me. But the way that I approach is just by building friendships and relationships and asking them questions about that thing that I care about that, that I want to learn more about. And who is in that five changes pretty drastically over the course of your life as well. And some of them are just like people that are professional figures, right? Like, for instance, Darren Hardy is a, is a big, I'm a big fan of his, a book called The Compound Effect, which talks about how small changes over time can, can make big results. So I really dug into that and like followed him and like really just kind of learned everything I could from him because that was something I cared about. And then once I felt like I had gained what I needed from that, then I found someone else for a different skill that I wanted to kind of fill in that slot. I think there's also active and passive mentorships. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like for me, one of the passive mentorships, like the person didn't realize they were mentoring me, mm -hmm. but I was working with them was Brad Bird. For me, he's the ultimate leader that I've ever worked with, you know, on, on films. And he was just such a good, the way he would communicate, you know, a lot of directors would come and say, they just look at your shots and like change these things. And like, that's good leadership. Brad Bird would come and you'd sit down and he'd look at your shot and he'd be like, dude, How's it going? What's your name? Who are you? Wow, this looks amazing. This is just incredible. You know what would make it even better? If we focused in on this character over here and drew more attention because the story will then be stronger, you know, and you figure out how to do that, but this is the reason why. And you just, you go back to your desk and you have all this energy and you have the motivation of why you need to change. You don't have specific notes that are like, turn this light down 5%, you know, change this thing. It was, it was more like the story needs this. And I get back and you'd realize that he had just ripped apart everything you had done and you have to start over, but you're motivated. And I go, now you want to do it again. Exactly. And it was like, I learned so much about leadership from that to go, that's who I want to be. I want to be like that. I, wanna, I don't want to give someone instructions. I want to give them inspiration. I want to give them the why and and. You know, that was through passive mentorship. You know, he didn't agree, okay, I'm going to be your mentor. He was just doing his job. And so, you know, there can be invisible mentorships that just happen from the people around you. Yes. I'm so glad y'all mentioned that, the difference between passive and active, because we really do see both of those with mentorship. Um, passive seems to happen very naturally, yeah. right? Just people you're communicating and interacting with normally. Um, but where is, whether we're looking for passive or active mentorship, Where's a good starting place to look? Where should we be looking within our support circles, our networks, things like that? I mean, I, I would say mm -hmm. that you approach mentorship the same way you do networking, which is just creating relationships with people. And like the word networking itself and mentorship on even further down the road are, are intimidating, right? Because it's you're trying to make a connection with someone that's doing the thing you want to do and is and they're busy. They have other people that want their time. And it's easy to be like, am I worthy of this, right? And, and you can really, you know, you can kind of make it something that's kind of hard to get into because you're doing that to yourself, you know? And so it's really honestly about just making connections with people and talking to them about the things that you're interested in that they do because the truth is people are very comfortable talking about themselves, right? That's the thing we know the most about. <laughs> so when you talk to someone, ask them about something that they are comfortable with, and then you'll start that rapport, and then you can kind of see where that leads. But I wouldn't go into those conversations with any expectation or direct hope of, like, a commitment from someone because at that point that, that can be very, you know, like, we don't always have the time for that kind of commitment, but maybe I can have more of a passive thing with you or something that'll slowly build over time. I had two different students over the years that have reached out to me in just the right way. I get a lot of people that contact me, like a whole lot, hundreds of different people that write. And some of them, 
I, I almost can't even reply to because they're like, you know, I want to do this and I want you to teach me this for free and I want you to send me a computer. I mean, literally, people are like, can you send me the gear? And I'm like, I'm not even going to reply to this because this is just crazy. Like, there's an expectation that I have, that I owe them something. And then there's other people who come and there was a, a student here at Full Sail back in like 2007 who said, I love what you do and I was just wondering if I could ask you this one question. So I could reply to this really easy. It was low commitment. We built a friendship and he's like, if you had time, would you be willing to look at my portfolio before I finish school? I have two more years until I finish. I'm like, I would be glad to. And I gave him some advice and he was able to take that advice. And again, I served the ping pong ball back to him and then left it for him to do the work. He went and did a year's worth of work came back, his reel had improved, and he reached the point, he reached graduation, and he wanted to kind of go forward. He's now uh, an environment lead at Disney Feature, you know, and I guarantee he's going to be in the Hall of Fame anytime now, you know, and uh, Lance Summers, and he's come back to the school and done stuff, and there's another student who had the same thing, who reached out very humbly, very low commitment to, like, passively mentor, and then it turned into an active mentorship that was long-term and this other student from Italy, the same thing, is now working, you know, on the Star Wars games at Remedy, you know, and in, it, it's just exciting to see that, you know, like, okay, I'll give you something back. You took it, you listened, wow, you listened, that's great. You applied it, you used it in your own life, you made your own story, I think that's great. That's awesome. So I guess I'm the other side of that coin, actually, because I do like for people to contact me and tell me exactly what it is that they need from me. So that way I can assess very quickly and early on whether or not I can actually help them. So if it's something in game design, like I know my degree says game design, but it actually has nothing to do with game design. When I was going to Full Sail back in 2011, it's all about game production for me. So uh, like, for instance, somebody approached me, um, I think it was yesterday, about um, level design. And I'm like, I don't know anything about level design. So, But I have people in my network that could probably help this person along. So like, that's what I would like to know. Um, but again, that's the other side of the coin, right? Because they're, they're, I guess it's just like where you are in your career or your life journey and like where we are in our, in our jobs and like what games we might be working on or how busy our schedules are. But I think either way, like try to figure out what would be the best approach for you because just because it's not the best approach for us doesn't mean that, you know, all of us are like that, right? Like you just saw three different types of ways that we like to mentor and be approached about mentorship. So, um, and the other thing that I did for finding mentors um, was actually just through LinkedIn. Um, I th and Twitter was very big at the time. I don't know about now, but. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like reaching out to that and like Jamison said, right? Like we are experts about ourselves see if there's something that we can do about that's approachable for us and it would be like a very easy and seemingly organic conversation that we can have with you because I mean I always say this like we can tell when you want something from us <laughs> so so just be your true authentic self if we can help you we definitely will try and if we can't hopefully we'll be able to find you somebody who can yeah I want to add to that real quick the because I love that because the every it's not always going to be a good fit either. yeah Right. Like sometimes, you know, maybe maybe there's something I can provide for you quickly that then that that's it. Right. Because then there's maybe not a, a great mesh of personalities or my time's not lining up well with yours or the things you care about now, you know, aren't lining up with what I'm working on. And that's OK. Like that, that's going to happen. And but like you said, maybe I can point you towards someone else or maybe it's a you know what, let's touch base again in a few months. Let's see where things are give you some feedback to do something, and then we can kind of come back around on that. I bet 90% of the time I've done that and put the ball in their court, they haven't followed through. Yeah, sure. And that's that's really disappointing for me because now I feel like I've wasted the time that I gave, and that, that's a discouragement for me to do that more. You know, So really follow through. And, and if you feel like the request from someone like that you want to mentor you is unreasonable or something you can't get to, have that conversation now and be like, you know what, I'm going to need more time for that. Or this piece of that I don't quite understand. Could you either help me with this or help me, you know, where do I go to find that information? The human element of this, I think the young people of now have a disadvantage because of all the computer and this kind of separation. Mm -hmm. This is a very personal, vulnerable human thing that you have to do to ask somebody for help. And we are not trained in society. We have a very curated view of the world of this YouTube life, Twitter, everybody has the perfect life. And like, it's not true. 
the real life is that we've had to struggle through this. The reason we're back here is to tell you that we are human beings and that these are not glorious co careers that you can reach that are impossible. It's the, no, you're going to have to work your ass off to be able to get into these jobs and you're going to have to be a decent human being. So learning that soft skills of just being able to be approachable and to be humble and to realize that there's no debt in the world. No, you don't owe anybody anything and nobody owes you anything. You're just going to have to work hard, be kind, be cool. This entire week, I keep asking different people, and, and the answer is always 100%. 100% of the time, would you rather work with somebody who is crazy skilled but is kind of a dick, or would you like to work with somebody who's just moderately skilled but really has good communication skills? And like, oh, there's no question. The moderately skilled person who has communication skills, hands down, 100% of the time, is the better choice, always. So when it comes to mentorship, that's really key. That's perfect because uh, when we're thinking about finding a mentor, sometimes it's like, well, am I looking for some hard skills, more from a teacher, some soft skills to help develop me? Um, and it can get a little confusing, right? And what we're looking for with a mentor, uh, what qualities, like what kind of personality traits, behavioral traits, what qualities do you typically look for in a mentor? Oh, so I'm going to go with this one. So it's, it's really, you really need to figure out who you are and how you learn and what your communication style is. And then that way, it'll be very, it'll be much faster when you're trying to find that mentor. Because like for me, um, I, I do want a little bit more personable, um, you know, organic kind of feel. And like, I do want to have an understanding of what it is that you're looking for. Because for me, like, I want to get you on that mentorship journey as quickly as possible, right? So if it's not me, I want to be able to assess that very quickly. And like, you know, like Jameson said earlier, like, it's a two-way street. You know, I have also been in the same boat where someone has reached out to me, or even some of the professors at Full Sail would be like, hey, Nadi's really cool. Like, you know, why don't you connect with her and like, see what's up? And then I'll be like, oh, yeah, great to meet you. Crickets. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay then, all right. But then the other thing that kind of sucks is that sometimes those people come back around and I'm like, you didn't respond to me the first time, so like, why do I need to help you now, you know? Which is kind of a shitty thing to say, I understand. But at the same time, like, there are still like 10 people behind me that are showing me that they want the effort. So like, make sure that you're following up, make sure that you're chasing the leads down and getting the feedback and showing us that you're implementing the feedback. Because, you know, just like you, we want to see you grow and improve, right? And, um, you know, again, it's a two-way street. So, like, it's our time is valuable as, as is yours. So as you're seeking mentors as well, like, you know, make sure you have their time and your time um, in mind as you're kind of scheduling or trying to figure out what that cadence is going to be. I think there's something to um, having that ability to just listen, even if you, you know, if those things come up in you to be like, yeah, 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 I know this, I know this. Mm. If you say that, it's just going to shut down the whole relationship. Yeah. You just got to be able to go like, I'm not going to know everything about you. If I give you advice, um, you know, just absorb it, learn to listen, you know, and, and then I would do the same as, as a, as a mentor, I, you know, or even being a mentee, I want there to be a two way relationship of just listening, like just soak it in and don't let, you know, those voices of like, I can't be helped, I can't ask for help, and I, you know, I already know this, that's gonna stop you. You know, just like, just absorb it, take what you can from it, and if you do know something that somebody's saying, just just suck it in and, you know, create. That, that's what that relationship about. I think a lot of, we've sort of lost this skill in society because school has taught us to be, you know, you're gonna take this test in the end and your whole identity is based off of your grade. And like, that's not how the world actually works, especially in the arts. This is all about failing. We aim to fail as much as possible, as quick as possible, so you can find the one thing that doesn't look like failing. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you know, you want to, you want to get through this as much as possible. So a mentorship, I think of old apprenticeships. Like if you were going to be a blacksmith, mm -hmm. you're not going to take a test and then suddenly be a blacksmith. No, you're going to have to get out there with a hammer, and you're going to have to see if you can get the power and the accuracy until you can do it right and slowly get more and more until it's really refined and you have this craft. This is what mentorship is about, is apprenticeship, mentorship, back and forth. Um, and being humble to just going to go, I'm going to make mistakes. And this is a safe relationship. Mm -hmm. I thought about the word playing. And I have my own definition for it is failing safely. You know, like, you know, I see little young cubs playing, you know, in a nature videos, you know, the little baby lions, and they're so cute. And they're attacking each other, and, like, it's safe, but they're basically learning how to kill other animals for food in a safe way, where they're not going to get crushed. 
You as students and we as professionals need to always be in that state of play where you have somebody around you that can say, great, you just failed at this. Now try this angle, you know, and now try that thing. Now try this thing. Play safely and know that you can make those mistakes on purpose. Yeah, failure is kind of the biggest thing in, in what we do, right? Like, and just to piggyback off what you said a little bit, it's find, finding the thing that works. There, there can be multiple things that work, right? And, and when you're thinking about mentorship, there's a lot of potential options for you out there. Some of them are not going to be the right fit, like I mentioned before. The first person I ever actually asked to mentor me said no. And I don't think I've officially asked someone since then. I've, I've found a way that worked for me better after that, like in these more, you know, kind of organic building kind of, kind of environments. But I only say this because you are going to fail at this, right? But I think the thing that will, will help you kind of get there faster is understanding exactly what you need and being able to communicate that quickly and effectively. Because the second someone understands what they need from you, kind of like what you were talking before, they we know how we can kind of process that and, and kind of help provide what you need or let you know if we can. And, like, and I think that's important to understand early so that can get framed quickly and then you can start moving in the right direction. But you may find out right away, actually, that this isn't going to be a good fit and then maybe help you find a better one. Yeah, I really love what you said, Jeremy. I think it was like you fail fast, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's just fail fast so we can get onto the next thing and see what doesn't look like failure. So if you're taking notes or writing things down, really good little nugget, right? Fail fast so you can get back up and keep going. Um, it also sounds like, as we're talking about the qualities of a mentor, some qualities of a mentee, um, so accountability and follow through, right, is really important. If you're gonna reach out and ask for somebody's time, uh, follow through, have some integrity and do what you say you're going to do, right? So you can both benefit. It's a, a back and forth, right, the paddle, symbiotic relationship. Um, so we're thinking about mentees. What are some of the qualities that we should have as a mentee when we're reaching out and we're asking for that assistance and support of, of course, accountability, right, and follow through. Is there anything else you really love to see when a mentee comes to you where you're like, yeah, that, yes, you have it, that is it? Nari, you, you said it in a way that I, I really like, you know, just like you need to know what you want. Yes. Slow down a little bit and think about your area of weakness that you recognize. Don't just go, I mean, I, I get so many emails that are like, yeah, I want advice for just general how to get into this. I'm like, yeah. I, I can't write that in an email versus going, I struggle with my color in my illustrations and I have this particular piece that I'm working on. Like that I can do something with. Yeah. That I can go try this, try that, try this. You know, and being able to, to know where your area of like, I don't know what's missing, but give me something practical. That is a really great thing. So knowing that in yourself, like if I go to somebody, I wanna make sure that it's very specific. So yeah. I totally agree, <laughs> you know? It makes it easier for both parties. Yeah. Make, set yourself up for success by making it as easy as possible for somebody to mentor you. Yeah, yeah those first interactions should be as streamlined as possible too. Like you're talking about getting these long emails and you know that, that stuff is very overwhelming. One, it's hard to sometimes find time to read all of that. Like I would highly suggest a, like the first time you talk to someone, like if you're, if you're contacting me on LinkedIn, here's what I would wanna see. Hey, we met at Hall of Fame this panel, like just a quick reminder for me of like, you know, just so I can frame my thoughts around this conversation. And then don't say, do you have time for a question? Because then I have to respond yes, and then you have to come back with the question, right? Just do something more along as, hey, I had one quick question and one thing. One, and like, because like you mentioned, I can respond to one thing, and then we can see where it goes from there. But like very quickly, just give it the, you've, you've framed the conversation, you've given me a quick thing to, to respond to, the ball's in my court, and then we can go from there. Totally agree. And I think your instructors probably do a really good job of prepping you for this, right? When you're reaching out for help. Can you tell me specifically what you need help with, right? <laughs> I know you guys hear it all the time from instructors. You need to tell me what it is you need assistance with. So making sure you're being specific and clearly stating uh, what it is you're looking for, yeah? Awesome. Because this is, this is key in the industry, too. This is not just about learning. This is like if I'm going to go ask somebody for their help. I better know exactly what I'm asking. This is just standard practice. So this is not just something for a mentee-mentor relationship. Yeah. This is just business. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna reach out to go, this model is broken and I don't know why and you seem like the person that can fix it. Yep. Help, you know, uh, you just know that's, that's, you know, 100 times a day. Yep. Yep. Yes. Every day. <laughs> yep. 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 Yes. 
Um, so let's see. With because this is a two-way street, I've been hearing a lot. It's kind of back and forth. Uh, so there's something to, to be gained from each side. What would you say is the most um, important or profound thing you have gained as being a mentor, like from a mentee? What is something that's significant that you have gained or learned or, or was impactful? I have learned through the years to realize to never ever uh, assume that somebody at the bottom has less knowledge or something to bring to the table. Sometimes where like, one thing that I loved about Pixar is that it truly, it's the only time that I've actually seen a studio be open to every idea from every person. So when we go into a review, all the lights are off and anyone is allowed to speak and you can be an intern or you can be a director with 40 years experience. And so if somebody has an idea, they accept all ideas and often people that are you know, just beginners could give a bit of advice. Now you need to be ready for that advice to be shot down as well. <laughs> you know, you need to have enough resilience to be like, you know, no, we're not going with that. And in 99% of the time, it's a no, we're not going with that. But um, I've learned enough to go, I have met PAs who end up becoming producers really quick. And I've met, you know, just the underdogs of the, the beginner people. And so for me, what I love out of the relationship, can again, it, it's, it's a back and forth, is the fresh energy. That's why I love coming to these events because the spark in your eyes remind me that my job is cool because sometimes I'm just sitting here banging my head against a computer and just going, this is a horrible career. Why did I do this to myself? You know, why won't this thing render, you know, or whatever. And, and then I come to this and I'm like, man, I, I'm really glad I'm not an accountant. You know, <laughs> I'm just like, I go to do my taxes and like, I have it good, you know? So I, it's, it's that relationship. I want to know, I get something back from going, I helped you and you sparked a question in me that I didn't, I hadn't put in words to yet. And then I might be able to find a way to teach something, you know, like I have to work hard to teach, you know, like I, I saw a thing once that was this triangle of learning. If you come to a space like this and you hear someone speak, you will probably only remember 5% of what we said today. If you come in and you watch a film that moves you emotionally, you're gonna remember 10 or 15%. If you're gonna come in and do a workshop where you actually have to do something with your hands, you have to paint or create or model or do something, you're upwards of 50%. If you wanna to get to that 90% retention, you teach it. So being the person who has to put it together and go, how do I take this thing that's vague and put words to it, it's gonna stick. So being a mentor, that's what I get out of it, of going, that's a really good question. I've never thought about what we do in my career. Let me put words on that. And then the next person that comes up, I'm like, hey, I've got words for that. Yeah. Give it to you, it helped you, great. That's awesome. You know, I, I think that the biggest thing I get out of it is just as a person, I love making connections. Like I, I love getting to know people, even if it's on just a, a small level, hearing hearing updates about about how things are going in their career, those you know, those things in their life. And it's it's actually the reason I started streaming because like my my whole my whole thing is about bringing on other developers to talk about their experiences in the industry and getting people insight into different you know different paths different different degrees different you know things that they do for their careers and it's a way for me to like spread that on a, on a bigger scale because I enjoy that right like that's it's fulfilling for me to know that I'm helping people do better in their careers, even if I don't know what's happening. Like, and, and that's that's a really nice thing to think about. But then additionally, like, there's a couple of examples where someone came to me for mentorship, and we slowly built a bond over time to where now they're actually some of my best friends in the world, and I come to them for things that I need on a mentorship side, and it's become something that I, you know, I value more than, you know, most things that I've gained in the career. Yeah, so for me, it's been actually, like, almost almost like a free professional training because like through the mentees that I've mentored, like it's also helped kind of round me out as a leader as well. And it's actually really kind of cool because I never expected that to happen. Cause normally when you think of mentorship, you're just like, Oh yeah, I'm just helping somebody to get to that next step. But it's actually given me a lot of feedback in terms of like how I want to lead people or how I want to be seen as a leader within my professional career as well. So not only that, but like like Jeremy said, like it's it's cool because it's refreshing and you guys are asking us all these really awesome questions and it's making us also reevaluate and think about the things that are coming up that we might need to become more familiar with. And um, yeah, it's just a rejuvenation. Um, and for me, I knew how hard it was uh, right out of 
full sail. And so it's actually a really big passion of mine to make sure that we can help um, help you guys succeed. Like that's like one of the biggest reasons why uh, mentorship became such a huge passion for me because man, it is hard out there and we definitely understand to feel it. Um, but you know, hopefully with the, the right match and the right mentor, you, you guys will be able to kind of like get that foot in the door. Yeah, we don't want you to have to sleep on a couch yeah. and you know on somebody else's house oh, for months God. on end at the beginning of your so career. Oh. Yeah, we we want you to have like you're our children. We want you to be more successful than us. Um, that yes, <laughs> pass it down. Yeah. So it sounds like there's like a natural cycle that happens sometimes yeah. of going from like mentee to mentor, and it, yep. almost like the best preparation for being a mentor is to be a mentee mm -hmm. first. Oh, yeah. um, so that's kind of cool. It's really insightful information. Um, we talked about a lot of the good stuff, the benefits, some of the challenges, right? When people aren't very specific or they don't follow up. Um, but are there any other like big challenges that you've encountered in either trying to find a mentor or to mentor somebody else? Anything that was kind of difficult to navigate? It, it's usually about expectations. That's where the, the biggest hangups happen, I think. And because you know, early as I was no, as I was understanding about myself that I needed things to that I had things I needed to work on and was trying finding people to help with that. Like, like that first interaction I talked about, I went right in. I was like, mentor me. Like, I want to see you weekly. Like, you know, like I went in with this expectation what that was going to be, and it had to have been very off-putting, mm -hmm. and, and which is probably why it didn't work out. But it didn't change the fact that I needed that. You know, there's, there's something that I had identified that I needed, and so I've, I found other ways to do that for the, through some more passive things and just building relationships with people. But I think I think the whole... Like, it can be scary to think I'm busy, and then now someone wants a lot of my time, right? So, like, it's just something that, that you have to be very clear about. Yeah, I, I find expectations, that's a really good word. Because yeah. uh, in my career, I, I mean, this, this branches out beyond just mentorship to go, stress, to me, comes from broken expectations. Mm -hmm. Like, if somebody comes to me and says, we need you to work 12 hours this day, and we need you to work on that Saturday three weeks from now, I can plan for that. You know, it's not fun, but I can plan for that. It's the things that get me are the, okay, you're about to go home at six. Hey, we need this other thing delivered tonight before 10 p.m. and you're gonna work later. Woo, boy, that, that just increases my stress because I didn't expect that. So in any of these relationships, you know, setting very clear expectations. I, I do that with clients even. Like if I, I was freelance for a while and I would, somebody gave me a piece of advice you know, make a contract that's a single page, really easy to read thing that is just very clear. Uh, it, within two weeks time, I'm going to deliver this file to this Dropbox location, and you're gonna pay me this much to this bank account at this time, and it's gonna be this many pixels, and just like as clear as you can get it, and you sign that before you start, and that saved me so many headaches versus going, hey, we're gonna be creative together, let's go. And they're <laughs> expecting you to do a feature film, and you're expecting to do a, a single frame. You know, it's not gonna be good, you know? So set those expectations as clearly as possible, and then it, it just all works. It's like guardrails that protect you. Yeah, um, I think my advice would just be that um, sometimes you, uh, I think sometimes as you're looking for our mentor, you're like, oh yeah, this person's gonna be the best, the, it's perfect fit. And then to like reach out and be like, nope. It's like, oh man, what do I do now, right? <laughs> so like, don't get lost in that process. Just kind of be flexible and be open, right? We're all just humans. And um, you know, it can be incredibly disappointing that first time, <laughs> like I'm sure it was for you as well. And, and me too, right? Like we've all had that failure point where we're just like, oh man, that person was not very, very nice. Or you know, their, their teaching style is just not jiving with my learning style. So just kind of like be flexible in that way. Um, you know, there might be some disappointment along the way, but that's okay. You know, it might not be right now, but that doesn't mean that it can't be later. I'll, I'll speak to one other thing, because because I'm making a shift in my career now to professional mentorship. Um, I'm gonna have people pay me for the mentorship. That's a whole different thing, mm -hmm. you know? So coming to it to go, yeah, I'll do this, and we'll do this for a long period of time. It's not gonna be, I mean, I can teach a class, mm -hmm. but if we do mentorships, it's like, I want this to be a year long, where we meet once a month, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be expensive because the investment of going, I'm customizing in this to you, and this, mm -hmm. this hour and a half every month is with you. There are more and more people doing this as well, so this is another option, but it's, it's not gonna be for free, and it is definitely a transaction of going, I'm gonna gain something from your years of experience, and I'm going to pay you to do this, and then it's, it's kind of equaling the ground versus reaching out and just expecting somebody to really give a lot, 
you know, there's, there's a lot of people that reach out to me and I'm happy to answer quick questions, but if it, it's gonna be a really in-depth thing to like, I'm gonna really pick apart your portfolio and I'm gonna see where you want to go and then we're gonna make goals and then we're gonna send you on a task to do hard work. Mm -hmm. That's something that is a, not very common in the industry, but I do, I've been researching different people that do this and how beneficial that is as well. So that's another option if you know that you're willing to pay for that and go, I know this person, I want to have this, I want to do that. And just knowing what the options are. Sure. Yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit about day one, how do I find someone to mentor me, right? Because you, it's gonna be, it, it, it's kind of simple if you go about it the right way. And here's, here's what I would suggest. Here's the things that have resonated well with me. Send a LinkedIn connection, right? I expect to get like 60 LinkedIn connections today, <laughs> all right? I, I'm serious. I, I'll, I'll friend any full cell student, so feel free. But that first message, I want, I want the reminder where we met, right? Or, or even just, hey, I was at your talk, you know, that kind of thing, right? And then, then maybe a quick question I can respond to. But that's just the start, right? Where you really start to, to get into this is to make yourself memorable, right? When you see a post of mine, interact with it, ask me about it. Like, find opportunities to, to strike up an actual conversation about something you know I care about, and then that will allow me to start to remember you, start having real conversations instead of cursory, like, oh, person X needs an answer to Y, I provided that, let's move on. But it's simple, and you can do that at your own pace. We can connect now, have a little bit of a conversation, and then you don't really need anything until six months from now when you're trying to start putting feelers out for jobs, right? And maybe you just want some advice of like, hey, what should I, you know, like, I'm thinking about this place, I saw you work there before, what do they look for in a candidate? You know, like, those, those kind of questions are fine. Like, that allows me to quickly tell you what I think you should care about if you're, you know, looking into to that place. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you. I was going to ask that. Can you kind of model what a, what a reach out a request for mentorship might look like, what, what you'd expect to see? And I think um, it was you earlier, Jeremy, that gave some examples of when a student reached out at the right time with the right kind of words. Uh, Jameson, you just kind of expanded on it. Uh, Nari, what are your kind of recommendations for that initial reach out? Because I'm hearing a lot of like, it's just people connecting with people, yeah. right? Some genuine interest, genuine relationships. Uh, do you have any um, uh, thoughts on how to make that initial connection? So I totally agree with everything that Jeremy and, uh, and Jameson said. My only thing is that once we get past that first conversation, if you can tell me like exactly what you want to get from me or how I can help you, how often you want to meet up and all of that information, that's also very helpful as well. But like getting that organic reach out, that's that goes a lot longer with a lot, or it goes much further with a lot more people, right? Because, uh, like I said before, we can tell when you want something from us. So you know, kind of make it a little bit more organic. Help us to figure out what it is exactly that you need from us, and then that way we can help you along the way, or get you at least connect you with the other person or someone else in our network that can help you a lot better than we can. There's, it's funny. I feel like ninety percent of you probably won't do this because it's too intimidating to reach out to somebody and it's your own it's only your own loss you know um, <laughs> because most of you would be like well I'm just gonna wait and I mean so many people in the industry that just don't don't think of like I want to learn something new I've reached out to people I, I did like a peer men like mentor mentor or mentee mentee actually would be the better thing where we totally are peers I reached out to a guy I found on LinkedIn and he was a, um, a lighting director at Disney Imagineering doing the physical lighting for theme parks mm -hmm. and I had just started in games coming out of feature animation I'm like you know I realized theme parks seem like a lot closer to games to open world games than mm -hmm. film was because you now have this environment that has to be seen from every single angle mm -hmm. so I just reached out to him and said I would love to pick your brain sometime about how you do this. You know, I work in games as a lighting director, and he's like, well, I would love to pick your brain about what you do in games so that I can use those tools. And we're like, great. And so we got together, and we had a four-hour conversation about every little detail and story, and we were like back and forth in this great synergy. You know, now we're connected from that one call, and like this was really useful. I've taken things that he told me and put it into talks. You know, and then I, I don't know where he's gone we, you know, with it too, to use those tools. And you, know, you gotta just reach out and do it. You know, there's so, f I mean, even though I know that I've gotten, I've already gotten like 40 or 50 LinkedIn requests just from yesterday, but only a couple of you have written messages mm -hmm. and only like two of you have written very specific things. Yep. Like yeah. you said, a lot of them are like, 
it was great to meet you. And I'm like, yeah. cool. And probably and that's a that'll... place to start, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's fine. But I would love, I mean, I would love if one of you came back and said, would you look at my current reel and tell me where to go before I graduate? That's exciting to me, you know? And especially if it's something that I do. If it's something, if somebody comes to me and they're like, I'm a game designer, I'm like, I can't help you. Yeah. But if somebody comes and says, I want to get color and light into my images and I want to make this look really pretty, I'm like, well, I can, I can tell you something there. Yeah, show your shot. Yeah. Yeah. The worst we can say is no, you know, because yeah. maybe, again, maybe we're just too busy. But like, it never, 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 ever hurts to ask, right? Like, I still use these same, these same tools in, you know, it, at Zynga. Like, when I see another producer or another engineer or designer or somebody that like does really amazing stuff, I'm like, man, this is effing cool. Like, tell me about it. Like, if I want, if I need, what would be like the biggest thing that I, what's the main thing that I need to learn about this new tool? Or, you know, how can I learn from you so that when I'm talking to other people about this, I don't, like, I don't sound like a dumbass, right? So it's just like being able to just be like, oh yeah, this is really amazing. Like, t teach me more, tell me more. So, you know, again, shoot your shot. Worst we can say is no. Try not to take it personally. Um, hopefully, as they respond, they're not jerks about it. But, you know, still, don't take it personally. Um, you know, sometimes it's just not a fit, and that's okay. I want to tell uh, <laughs> just the way the industry, um, oh, what was I going to say? There was something you said, and then I, my brain went some other way. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come back to yep, me. Yeah, it'll come back. I, this is what happens when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, one of the things I wanted to touch on a little bit is the fra framing your mind and understanding who who you're reaching out to and what mm. it is like what their availability yeah. is right so most of you are probably thinking you'll make a quick connection with us you'll you, hopefully you'll take the advice that we have here but coming into this you were probably thinking they're busy you know things are probably really hectic for them they're in the middle hall of fame that's all true right but what you have to understand is those of us that are here doing this are doing it because we want to connect with you, right? Like we're here for you. And so there's a decent chance we're going to want to reach back out to you and, and have a conversation if you reach out to us. So keep that in mind, but also understand like we are busy right now, right? You may not hear from us for a week or two when we get that time to go back and kind of look at it. Don't get discouraged. Don't double ping us and be like, where are you at? You know, like... Give us some time, but, you know, if a month goes down, you know, and we still haven't responded, maybe then it's going to be like, hey, I just wanted to touch base and, you know, say hey again. You know, quick reminders in that regard, I think, are okay. Yes. Yeah. Before we open to the audience, did it come back to you yet, your thought? No, I don't feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll open the questions and I'll be like, ah, there it is. Yes, yeah, and you know? just go for it if it pops back up because I'm sure everybody wants to hear Either that or be two this morning, it. you know, or whatever, be yes. after a party tonight, and I'll be like, Oh, man. Yeah, that's when it'll come back, right? We're trying to go to sleep at night. <laughs> uh, let's, let's just kind of recap, and then we'll open up for questions, right? When you're reaching out, uh, do a little research. Find out who you're reaching out to, what they specialize in, so you're not, you know, reaching out to Unari about level design, <laughs> right? So do a little research. Be intentional. Think about what it is you want to gain and what you want to ask so you can have that, that specific information in there. And remember, it's people talking to people, right? Uh, nurture that organic, natural relationship. Um, and have interest, right? Have some interest in who they are as people and not just what they can do for you, right? Because it's a back and forth kind of symbiotic relationship. Um, so now we'll turn it on over to the audience. There's a lot of hands up already. I thought, I thought of the thing that I was Nice. <laughs> Hold those questions. <laughs> just kind of a funny thing from the industry. A lot of you think that if you do comments on Twitter or some funny spinoff or uh, fan art or things like that, that the people at these companies won't see it. We do. We see everything. So we're, we're there at Pixar, and people make a little Pixar spoof or something, and they think, only my friends are going to see this. Everyone at Pixar will send these around to the company to go check out this awesome fan art, check out this funny thing, check out this spoof thing that somebody did, and we will die laughing at it and think it's awesome. Yeah. So everything that you do online is seen by the developers because we're just like you. Uh, anyhow, I just thought that was kind of yeah. Oh my goodness, I saw your hand go up really quick right there, yes, you're right. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Felipe. Thank you guys first for coming out, uh, dropping some gems. I consider myself like a really outgoing person. I have a background in sales, uh, but sometimes I feel as if I'm dominating the conversation. <laughs> when talking with a potential mentor, how would you guys balance that line of equal give and take? If you feel like you have 
kind of a dominant personality, I think it's more in your your court there, right? Like you have to picking up on like social cues with people is is a learned skill, yeah. right? Like you're gonna feel vibes, you're gonna you're gonna notice changes in behavior. If you see someone looking like they're like trying to respond, find find an opportunity to let them, right? But I think it's it's just a really good kind of back and forth cadence is, is the right way to go about it. And I said if if you if you know that about yourself, it's probably on you to kind of be aware of and find that right balance. I'd also say that I think there's this knowledge in the world of introvert versus extrovert. Yeah. I would consider myself more introvert than extrovert, but you might not know it in an event like this. Yeah. Leslie Braithwaite, if you've met him, seems like an extrovert, but last night he's like, I'm not. And I, I heard something once recently that was like, introverts care more about the relationships than extroverts do, and that's why they're so overwhelmed and don't want so much of it. Mm -hmm. So being able to listen and go, this person might actually, they're very passionate about their field, but they might not like crowds. Like, I don't like the big parties, because like, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> but I do like the one-on-one -on -one relationships. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, liked, I love the after this meeting, talking with those of you who come up. I mean, like, I spent more time yesterday after the talk than, I, than doing the talk. I spent an hour and a half just talking with five people after a talk yesterday, and that was great. I was just gonna say, maybe be really concise in like the questions or um, the things that you wanna ask, and then maybe that will kinda help you like reel, reel that back a little bit. But yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, sometimes, you know, I have also been like, okay, stop. Let me answer the like <laughs> other questions that you just asked me, and then let's go forward. But yeah, depending on the mentor and stuff, but it might help you to just be like, figure out what your concise or the thing that you want to ask, ask it in a concise way, and then hopefully that'll kind of help you uh, moderate yourself. Yes. So we got one back here, and then we'll come over to the side and then uh, take some questions from our online viewers. Hi. Uh, so uh, just I'm in the game design program, but I and I understand getting someone that kind of is in the same field, but would you also recommend getting ones that are outside your field, outside your comfort zone, areas that... You, you might not have an idea for, but you want to get more improvement in that area. Oh, absolutely. I, um, when, I was, when I graduated, I knew that I was not a technical person, and I knew that I would always have to be um, interacting with engineers. So my first mentor was an engineer. And I, and I went to her, and I found her at like a random GDC talk, actually, and I was like, man, I really loved everything that you said in this talk. Like, how can we connect? I am really, like, dumb when it comes to engineering in any way, shape, or form. Like, what are ways that engineers like to be spoken to? Like, what do I need to be, or what do I need to do to be respected by engineers so that when I'm interacting and talking with them that they don't look at me like I'm some, you know, pencil pusher. I got so. the Duolingo app of just speaking tech. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have it, too. <laughs> speaking C++. No, I'm just kidding. You know, as a designer, um, one of the best skills that you can develop is empathy, mm -hmm. right? And that's and the reason I say that for designers is specifically because when you're making decisions that are impacting the rest of the team, you need to understand what impact you're making on individuals. And so getting close with someone in the art department, someone in the program department, someone in UX, like those are super valuable relationships because they allow you to be a better kind of person to make decisions that's gonna affect so many other people. Mm -hmm. And I think we already have somebody right back here. And then if we can grab these two and then online. All right, go ahead. Actually, this is from online. So oh, perfect. we have Tayama Smith, who's joining us on YouTube. Uh, she's a game art online student. She asks, how soon should we connect with a mentor if we are in the second half of our degree program? As a game art student, what things should I focus on? Hmm. I don't mind people reaching out early even because it can start very casual. I mean, even if somebody's in their first year, I've had people just say, I just, I want to explore and I'm interested in what you're doing. Could we just keep this casual relationship for now in case I have a question? And the, my answer will be absolutely, why not? You know, and as you get into it, if you have a very specific question, so I, I don't mind people coming very early because then it allows you to play and make a choice of like, I want to experiment into lighting and they might do it and they'd be like, well, no, this is not for me. I'm like, mm -hmm. great, I'm glad you failed at that and knew that you mm -hmm. didn't like that so that you can get into rigging or character animation or game design or something altogether different. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Did we, um, right. yeah, perfect. Hi, I'm Will. <laughs> um, you've talked a lot about what, like, some of the bad things that you can do while looking for a mentor and some of the great things that you can do while looking for a mentor. 
What are some like giant red flags that you find where people do in the middle? Like just the average things that make you go like, oh, yeah, not really. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think writing an email and text speak is usually, mm. not, I mean, that's probably more yeah. one of the bad ones. Like, <laughs> Yo, bro, sup? You know, and just like, I'm not going to respond to that. You know, um, <laughs> mediocre things, absolutely. Oh, this is probably more a fail, too. Just not coming back with something useful. It's not going to help you, and it's not going to help me. So anything that just kind of wastes time and spins in circles or asking the same question three different times, three different ways, when we're like, I just want to get to the point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, be yourself, but be professional. Yeah, like I think it's, there's, a, there's a time for, it's, it's not a friendship yet. Right, so you have to think about it as like a, it's a professional relationship you're trying to to develop, and and while you'll you'll gain comfort with that person over time, in the beginning you should be approaching it as someone that you're almost like a business relationship, but but not so stiff. You know what I mean? Like there, there's a middle ground there where you can be friendly and and try to make it that kind of relationship without going too far down the the spe that kind of speak and you know making it uncomfortable. Yeah, I would say to also like. If you're stuck, let us know. Because I know you can feel the pressure of being like, I really need to, you know, show them that I know what I'm doing or, like, I know exactly and I'm understanding what they're saying, but, like, you absolutely don't. Like, it's okay if you tell us that and you're, like, struggling with that. Because, like you said, if you're asking a question three different ways, like, we know something is wrong, but, like, if you're not able to tell us what's wrong, then we can't really take it any further than that. So, like, don't be afraid, right? Like, we're there for, like Jeremy said, to play safe. And then, yeah, the whole... What up, dog? I'm like, mm, not really. So I've learned also in my personal relationships, maybe this is just comes from being in my late 40s and just midlife crisis zone, but <laughs> vulnerability is actually your greatest strength, yep. yes. not your greatest weakness. Yep. Being able to come to the table and being like, I don't know about this thing and I need help is the most connective and honest thing you can do. In a relationship, the people that you'll bond the most with are usually the ones that you've had to go through a struggle with together. Mm -hmm. Have you ever climbed a mountain with somebody? Mm -hmm. You've ever tried to be married? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? These are things where you're gonna get in and you're gonna see the worst parts of this person mm -hmm. and you gotta just know that that's actually the most connective. So you coming in and being like, I'm struggling with this and you might be able to be an answer to that. Mm -hmm. it, that's a, it's a sensitive thing, but it's a really good thing. Yeah, sometimes our biggest challenges are what we most have in common with yeah. people. That's yeah. where the commonality is, right? In that, yeah. those challenges and the vulnerability. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Did we, yep, there we go, perfect. Hi, um, I'm Chris Reckling. I'm a creative writing uh, Excellent. degree. And uh, I just wanted to ask a question for all of you, which was just, was it like mentoring international students versus, you know, students from the US? And what is it like being an international working at maybe each of your companies? You know, what is that experience like? Awesome. It, it can be challenging, f at least for me, uh, because I, I don't understand other cultures as much, right? So, so I think the thing that, that I try to do in those scenarios is, is talk about what I know about and then ask questions back. Like, that's the other thing. It, it's a two-way street mentorship in general, right, where you're not just coming to me and I'm just giving you answers to your questions and that's all. I'm trying to, to develop a relationship in this as well. So it's actually an opportunity for me to learn because I've mentored with people from, like, Brazil and from, from Europe, and it's, it's been more like... At the beginning, I can tell you, hey, here's how our industry works here, right? Here's the things that you need to consider. Here's, you know, what I understand about how work visas work and after your school, how long you have the, these opportunities. But that's the limit of my knowledge, right? And, and I don't know very deeply that stuff, but I can learn and then I can help guide in the right direction and get you in touch with people that can help with more specific things that I don't know how to answer. International travel is one of my passions. I've been to 46 countries, and I've learned a lot about communicating, and I learned that my own worldview is a little bubble here in the United States. You know, and so I'm, I have a lot of compassion. Like, I've, I've gone to places where they've never seen white people before. In fact, I saw a kid run and scream because he thought our skin had been ripped off. Oh, no. <laughs> and, you know... That's good for my soul because most Americans don't get that. Most Americans just go, this is the way the world is. How it is in America is the only way we do things. And like, no, we really need to see another thing. And I think that that philosophy applies to industry too. So whenever I speak to somebody, I want to learn. I want to get to know them. There are cultural differences even between, 
you know, like I meet my, I worked for a year with a, um, a Scotland based company and 90% of them were from Scotland. And I start going at face value. We watch the same shows and same movies. We speak the same language, little different accents. They're exactly the same, but I go, no, there are some differences in the way we communicate and like trying to work with that to go, we're very straightforward as Americans and we want to get things done, you know, just get to the point, let's get this done. And there's other cultures where there's more of a dance of like the way we do this and like empathy and compassion on everyone and being able to be like, I want to learn about you and you want to learn about me and I'm going to help you with dealing with American companies versus dealing with a company in Singapore or in Australia or in, you know, Finland or, or different places like that. And there's a humility, again, vulnerability right there in the front. Let's see our differences and, and just have grace on each other. Yeah, my first mentorship actually within Zingo was with a, a gentleman that was in India. And so the, our biggest challenge was essentially just the time difference. And I felt so horrible because my, I would like get up at 7 a.m. To, to have that like 30 minutes to an hour with this guy. And it would be 9 p.m. for him. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm like, is there anything that we can do to kind of, like, make this a little bit better for both of us? But, I mean, we were both just willing to put the work in. So that was really, really helpful. And we got a lot of good stuff out of it. But we definitely, like, I had an agenda because I knew that this was the limited time that I had with this guy. And I wanted to make sure that, like, everything that I gave him was of value. And so, like, we would sit together and screen share and would basically, like, go through documentation or whatever questions he had that day. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, we are very international all over, right? Like, we all need to be now especially. So, um, yeah, I think, <clears throat> like, like you guys said, be vulnerable. There's cultural differences. I think being vulnerable about those cultural differences is also really helpful, too. Like, I just spent a year in the U.K., right, working with the U.K. team. And they always thought of me as the weird American because I was like, we can do it, guys. And they were just like, OK. But like, yeah. And I was just like, oh, all right. But every time, though, like they would sit there very quietly as I'm doing like a retrospective. I'm like, we did amazing. And they're like, yes, we did. And I'm like, oh, man. But they're like, no, we love it. And I'm like, do you? Because you tell me, oh, I love it. I went to a conference once in Mexico, in Monterey, Mexico. <laughs> And there was a bunch of international speakers who came from all over the world. And this, this guy was like, I give talks everywhere. And like, I went to Japan and everyone sat there very quietly, you know? And then I went to Korea and everyone sat there quietly. And I went to Europe and everyone was, you know, very professional and good questions and very quiet. And we come to Mexico and it's like, giant party! <laughs> you know, and he's like, this is amazing. Oh, wow, what a difference. And it was just like huge, I mean, like balloons and pyrotechnics for a talk like this. And we're like, Wow, cultural differences. Yeah. Can we awesome. relocate this to yeah. Mexico? <laughs> that sounds like full sale speed yeah. next year. <laughs> Do we have time to field another online? No. Oh. Okay. Well, Dean, Bad. any closing thoughts for our friends here in the audience? If you had other questions, sorry for the online people. If, online people, if you want to connect, you know, with with me, I won't speak for them if they want, but <laughs> LinkedIn. Contact me on LinkedIn or jeremy at lightingmentor.com. I will happily answer questions in with any of you, and I will happily stay afterwards. Um, if, if they're going to use this room, we can go out somewhere, but I have an hour before my next talk, so happily answer questions more if you have them. Same. Shoot your shot. Don't be shy. Yes. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. We genuinely, genuinely want to connect with you, so reach out to us for real. Yes. And if you're trying to kind of explore that mentorship, kick it off, begin it, strengthen it, nurture it. Hall of Fame is a perfect opportunity, right? There's tons of panels, workshops, meet and greets. I believe, uh, Jameson, you have a meet and greet at Double two. Rounds, yeah. uh, Nari, I think you have one tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. Do you have any coming up, Jeremy? Yeah, any portfolio meet review today. Yes, so check out the panels, the workshops, the, the back lot, just connecting with other students. Uh, you'll kind of see the Hall of Famers just walking around, right? Ordinary people, so you don't know who you're gonna bump into in these hallways and sessions. So. Take advantage of Hall of Fame week, get that networking and mentorship going, and enjoy, right? Above everything else, enjoy. Thanks. Thanks.